In this short video demo, we're going to solve an example heat transfer problem where we will be solving the heat equation to give us a temperature profile. The problem states, a plain wall of thickness L has a thermal conductivity that varies with temperature according to the equation K, which is the thermal conductivity, equals A times T, where T is the temperature of the wall. Heat only flows in the X direction, which means we're only concerned with temperature changes in this direction not in the y direction or not in the z direction. So we're first asked to derive an equation describing the steady state wall temperature at any point x when given the wall surface temperatures, Ts1 and Ts2. And so here's how our wall looks. So we're going to want to de derive an expression that tells us what does this equation look like. So right now, if we're being very naive, we don't know exactly what T as a function of x looks like. But if we solve the heat equation, we will be given an explicit equation that tells us exactly how temperature varies with x. So then we're asked to just plug in numbers into our equation and find the temperature at a specific location, which is x equals 3 centimeters into the wall. All right, so let's start to digest this problem. So the first step would be to write down the form of the heat equation. So it's a steady state problem, which means we don't have an accumulation term. We don't have a generation term, and we do not have a dt dx, I'm sorry, we do not have a dt dy or a dt dz term, so we just have the dt dx term. And that looks like this. All right, so neglecting all those terms that I just mentioned, we get this pretty simple form of the equation. So normally, when you have constant thermal conductivity, you can pull K out of the equation. However, we can't do that because we're told that our thermal conductivity varies with temperature. So we're going to keep this in the derivative for the time being. So our first step is going to be to separate and integrate. So we would get that the derivative of K times dt dx is equal to 0 dx. So when we integrate each side, we get that the integral of this derivative is just this term, k dt dx. And the integral of 0 dx is just going to be a constant, c1. OK, so right now, we, our boundary conditions are going to be given in terms of these two surface temperatures, so we, we do not need to apply a boundary condition right now. If we had a flux boundary condition, which would be expressed in dt dx, it might be more convenient for us to apply that boundary condition. But since we have two surface temperature conditions, we won't worry about applying the boundary condition just yet. So we will integrate this again now. And now we'll make the substitution that k is equal to at. So now we get a times t dt dx is equal to c1. And if we separate again, now we get at times dt is equal to c1 dx. So now we would integrate again. So now we have this temperature here, which will make this a nonlinear term. So the solution here is a over 2 times t squared is equal to c1 times x. And then we pick up a constant of integration, so we get c1 times x plus c2. All right, so now this is actually the full form of our equation. Now we need to apply the boundary conditions. So we have. I'll do these over on this side. So at x equals 0, we have our temperature is equal to Ts1. So that's just applying this condition. We're assuming that we'll know the temperature here at x equals 0. So substituting that into our equation here, if we substitute x equals 0 into here and solve for C2, this is pretty easy. We get C2, because this term goes away, we get C2 equals A divided by 2 over Ts squared. 
minus ts1 squared. So we just substituted x equals 0 into here, and we substituted this ts1 into here and solved for um, our constant of integration c2. So now we apply our other boundary condition, which states that at x equals l, t as a function of x is equal to ts2. So now we would do the same thing, and we would get a over 2 multiplied by ts2 squared is equal to c1 times l plus c2. We already know what c2 is. That's shown right here. So doing a little bit of algebra, we get c1 is equal to a over 2 times ts2 squared minus c2, which is a over 2 times ts1 squared. And we need to divide that whole thing by L. So that's just taking this equation and rearranging it and then substituting in this for C2. So we can still do a little bit better on simplifying here. So here we get that C1 is equal to A over 2L multiplied by TS2 squared minus TS1 squared. Okay, so now we know what C1 is and we know what C2 is. So now we can plug both of those into here and get this full equation with our temperatures. So once we substitute in C1 and C2, we still get A divided by 2 times T squared is equal to um, substituting in C1 and C2 now. So here's our C1. So that is A over 2L times TS2 squared minus TS1 squared. So even though that looks like a, a reasonably complex equation, remember that all of these are constants and things that we know. So you can think of this as just one big lumped term which is C1, and then we have to multiply that quantity by x to get our x dependency in there. And then we just have our plus C2, which again was A over 2 times TS1 squared. So now we would take this equation and solve for T, which is just going to be a function of x. So we would multiply the right-hand side by 2 over a, and then take the square root of it. So we end up with t of x is equal to the square root of ts2 squared minus ts1 squared multiplied by x over l plus ts1 squared. And that is our solution to part to part A. So now we have this equation that tells us exactly what the temperature is going to be as a function of x through the wall. So now to solve part B, now it's just a matter of kind of checking our equation to make sure we get a number that makes sense. If TS1, I'll go ahead and read this part B since I haven't yet. If L equals 10 centimeters, A is equal to 0 0.01, TS1 is 300, and TS2 is 600, what is the temperature at x equals 3 centimeters? So we'll go ahead and figure out the temperature at 0 0.03 meters. So if x equals 3 centimeters, we would just solve this equation and we would get 600 squared minus 300 squared multiplied by x over L. So this is 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.1 and then we have our TS1 squared, which is 300 squared. So the num number we get is 413.5 Kelvin. So it's good that we got a number that um, is in between 300 and 600. That's a good check. And normally for a plane wall with constant thermal conductivity, 
we would see a temperature dependence that would be linear if, if you're at steady state and there's no generation in the wall. We have this squared dependency, so we end up with something that looks like that. And we're at about here, so this is our 413.5 Kelvin. This is 600, and this is 300. So everything seems to be making sense. I skipped the part where we checked to make sure all of our units cancel out, so be sure that you do that when you solve an actual problem. Thank you.